for me, there's so many opportunities. I hope investors see that. They get so caught up in like, oh, but I could have made 100x on this. Yeah, but there's always another opportunity. I've never been in a position where I took a trade or missed a trade and then been like, oh, that was the last trade of my life. There's no other opportunities. Like there'll be the next Bitcoin out there. There'll be the next Ethereum. There'll be always something new. And to me, it's a risk reward assessment, meaning that you know, once something runs 100%, I'm not chasing it. I'm not going to be one of those people that's left holding the bag when the rug gets pulled. Instead, I'll look and find the next thing that hasn't run yet. Wait a minute, everyone. Welcome to Bitcoin Zella, your platform for daily cryptocurrency analysis and news. Our mission is to keep it simple. Bitcoin Zella offers engaging information that is easy to understand. Our analysts keep their eyes on the latest news to provide valuable insights via email. Don't miss out on this opportunity. Join our community of 10,000 subscribers and experience the new edge with Bitcoin Zella. Subscribe now. In this video, Gareth will share his insights on what could trigger Bitcoin to drop to 10K or even 30K? Why there's always another investment opportunity around the corner? How to avoid being left holding the bag when the market turns? Are you ready for the volatility that comes with investing in Bitcoin at its current price? Let's join Gareth in this interview about these topics and more. That's classic Michael Saylor, right? Did we really expect right. anything different to come out of his no. mouth? Now, having said <laughs> that, I, I do I do agree that, you know, if if you ask me where this is in 30 years from now, yeah, I do absolutely agree that this could rival the market cap of gold. Um, you know, so so I think you have that narrative. But again, it's it's a matter of what are investors expecting? Like if someone's buying today at seventy two thousand to seventy three thousand. Are they ready for the volatility that comes with that, which is corrections of 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 percent? And I think that's the kicker is that when he says it, I think there's a lot of retail investors that think, oh, man, you know, I'll buy this now. And in five years, I'll be so rich. And they're not looking at the risks involved, the drawdowns. And so, again, for me, absolutely. I, I think it's a fair statement if you're looking at the next 20 to 30 years. He probably would tell you it's a lot shorter time frame. But for me, again, it's it's a matter of are you going to tell investors that this is going here and what's your time frame on it? I don't know if he gave a time frame on that, but I think that's an important factor. Michael Saylor, the CEO of MicroStrategy, shared profound insights into his company's ambitious strategy surrounding its Bitcoin investments. Saylor detailed his end game plan and offered a detailed glimpse into the company's long-term vision. Bitcoin's price continues to rise, reaching a new all-time high of $73,162. Even after a brief drop to $69,000, Bitcoin quickly recovered, setting new records and showing the market's bullish trend. Yeah, so chart-wise, you're right. We've had this incredible run where we really kick-started it after the initial pullback on the spot ETF approval. We had that 20% correction, which to be honest was kind of a classic correction. It was a sell the news event. There was so much bullishness coming into the approval, and then you kind of got to sell the news portion there. But really what we've seen is that risk on continued in the overall asset markets, right? So we saw NVIDIA just going nuts. We've seen semiconductors as a whole going nuts. And there's this animal spirits that everyone is chasing that next big gain. And again, you know, while Bitcoin could go up a little bit higher, and again, I have a couple targets, but you mentioned the 75,000 level. I think it's worth just showing a few other possibilities. There's something called a measured move where if we take the low of the last cycle, to the recent yeah. high of the 2021 cycle. That's a 65, almost $66,000 move. The concept here is that you ultimately replicate that move here, and that would actually take us up to about, oh, I think it's right around that $80,000 target. So again, you replicate what we would call a measured move here. So again, I think as long as it's a risk on environment, you're likely going to see potentially further upside in Bitcoin. My only fear is this, right? Is that if we see the S&P start to crumble, we've seen some reversal candles, we've seen some engulfing candles on the S&P, on the semiconductors, on specifically NVIDIA, can the buyers stay with the Bitcoin trade and the alt altcoin trade? And one of the things I'll just mention here too is that it's very concerning, and I was just talking with Ben Cowan about this on our No Shill Zone earlier, is that the scams are alive and prevalent and so crazy that that to me is a warning sign. It's a be careful sign that the the kind of the people are not investing because it's a good investment, but because it's an easy 100x on the next meme coin. And that's a warning sign we saw in 2021. We saw the same thing in, in November of 2021 is these ridiculous price targets for one month out. You know, for me, 
there's no way you're getting to, you know, even by year end, you're not going to two hundred to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Is it possible a hundred thousand if we see risk on? The answer is yeah, a hundred thousand is a potential target by year end if that risk on environment stays. But just a couple notes here. We're seeing the Federal Reserve clamping down on some of their lending policies. So the the banking, the the kind of the banking lending program, it was an emergency lending program that they started back when Silicon Valley Bank failed. They have just ended that as of today. And that was a way for the banks to borrow cheap money and then ultimately use it as an arbitrage opportunity. So so I do worry that some of this liquidity in the system is starting to dry up. We know our government, of course, doesn't think that's the way it should be as we continue to run up a trillion dollars every hundred hundred days uh, in the national debt. But I do think, again, it's all a liquidity bubble at this point. And as long as that continues, then then Bitcoin could easily hit 100K by end of year. El Salvador's president, Nayib Bukal, has hinted that the country's Bitcoin holdings might be more than what's known. El Salvador, which adopted Bitcoin as legal tender in September 2021, is not just gaining from its Bitcoin reserves, but also earning from various Bitcoin-related sources. Bitcoin achieved a new peak in its market value, reaching an unprecedented high of $73,679. In the past 24 hours, Bitcoin not only increased by 1.8%, but also showed notable gains over the week, 10.7%, and the last two weeks, 23.3%, elevating its market cap to an impressive $1.43 trillion. So once we got to 20, so my initial call was 69,000 to 20, we achieved that. And then one of the things we talked about in our interviews is that the way we get to 10K is if the stock market collapses, right? If we see a 50% drop in the stock market, that's what will trigger Bitcoin to have that additional sell-off to 10 or 9,000. That obviously didn't happen, right? And so I still think that Bitcoin is vulnerable to a massive liquidity issue where, where you start to see the leverage in the system become too big. The stock market begins to decline. You see deleveraging occur and Bitcoin could easily go back to 30 to 32. But as a trader, again, you have to be able to move with the, the, the trends, right? And with the charts. And so at this stage, unless we saw a depression, I don't see Bitcoin going back to those levels of 10K. But I do okay. still think that once we see the markets pull back substantially 20, 30, 40% on the equity markets, we still should see a retrace to that 30 to 32,000 level. So in general, I think you're seeing a buy the news, buy, I should say buy the rumor on the halving, just like the ETF. It's such a hyped up event. You know, you're going to see, you see obviously the ability to mine get, get much harder for a lot of these miners. So I do think that it, it's in general a longer term bullish scenario. But I would, if we run up into that halving, I would look for the same sort of sell off that we saw right after the spot ETF was approved, where we pulled back about 20%. In February, the crypto world saw a worrying rise in phishing scams. Scammers tricked around 57,000 users, stealing nearly $47 million, as per scams differ data. They used phishing tricks to make users give up their digital assets. Some of London's wealthy residents are reportedly using cryptocurrency to pay for luxury home rentals. High interest rates and a dampened real estate market have led the city's affluent residents to opt against buying properties. The acceptance of payment in cryptocurrency demonstrates the real estate agency's openness and its eagerness to become a leader within the real estate sector. If you've been with us so far, a big thank you. Don't forget to subscribe for free to Bitcoin Zella for your daily news. The link is waiting below. That's all for today's crypto news. Stick around for more updates, insights, and analysis on cryptocurrencies. Share your thoughts in the comments, like this video, and subscribe for more exciting content.